Well, hello everyone. Today I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about IULs, Index Universal Life Policies, and, and how, the, how best to explain that to your client when you're sitting across the kitchen table. Because one of the things that I'm sure you've learned from Steve's videos, hopefully from my videos, from some of our trainings, is you want to keep this business simple, especially when you are sitting across the kitchen table from your clients. You know, one of the best uh, pieces of advice that I've ever heard in this industry is you are the smartest person in the room. You know the most about uh, insurance, life insurance, mortgage protection insurance, final expense, uh, out of everyone sitting at that kitchen table. So you don't need to um, impress your clients with your knowledge. Um, it, it, you do a better job of explaining to them and really educating them if you keep it simple and keep it understandable. So we try and avoid using lots of insurance lingo and insurance jargon and those big insurance terms, right? Um, because again, you don't need to impress your clients. Your real goal, your real job when you're sitting at that kitchen table is to uh, gain a friend, right? Uh, make sure that the client always knows that you're on their side. There's only one side for you to be on and it's theirs. Um, and so the easier that you can make this to understand for them, the better because uh, you will allow yourself to really become their ally and their proponent in this industry. So IULs, IULs are a huge buzzword for lots of reasons um, and they're a big buzz product, right? Because it allows people to get kind of the best of multiple worlds. They get the best of a lower premium right? So a premium that is going to be uh, more closely associated with maybe a term product, right? It's going to be a lower premium. Uh, and the advantages of a whole life or a, a more permanent insurance where they're going to have this product in place, you know, till they're 90, 100, 110 years old. So uh, we get that advantage where we don't have to worry about the product uh, expiring at a certain age, right? We don't have to worry about it running out in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Uh, we also get the advantage of it potentially gaining that cash value. So it's, it potentially becomes an investment uh, product as well. So it really is kind of a hybrid product between lots of different things. Um, but you got to be careful and you got to be careful how you explain it. So if you don't have a really good grasp on IULs, uh, hopefully this will help you to be able to understand and be able to convey it to your client. I know Steve has done some incredible videos on IULs and how to understand how they grow and how they build and how they work. But I want to talk to you today about how to explain that concept to your client because you will end up in a lot of homes where you'll have people that will say something like, oh, I bought this uh, insurance policy from an agent a few years ago and uh, then all of a sudden I got a letter in the mail saying my premiums were going to go up and so I had to cancel the product. And I don't understand why my premiums were going up because you know, it's supposed to be like a whole life. It's supposed to be universal life. Uh, so how, why would my premiums go up? And uh, they, they don't understand how this whole concept works. So here's the concept that I have used with my own clients and with our own agents that I think tends to work pretty well. Imagine an IUL is like your savings account and your checking account at the bank, right? So you have your savings account and you have your checking account. And your checking account you use to pay your bills, you use to um, pay your monthly expenses, pay your own mortgage, pay the water bill, the electric bill, so on and so forth, right? So you have your checking account and every month you write your checks out of that account. At a certain point in the month, imagine that you're uh, running a little short in your checking account, right? So you have your savings account sitting over here and your savings account has, let's just say $1,000 in it, right? So every month you're $10 short paying your bills. So every month, I'm going to draw this out a little bit here for you. So your checking account is where we pay our bills from, right? Over here, we have our savings account. Our savings account is where we save, right? So every month we pay our bills, and every month, let's just say we're $10 short. So every month, we take $10 from our savings account and put it into our checking account. And remember, we started our savings account with $1,000. 
So now we have to subtract $10. Now we have $990 and so on and so forth. Uh, every single month, right? We keep moving money from our savings account that we had been building up and we start using those funds, right? To kind of close the gap on our monthly bill paying. Well, here's what happens. At a certain point, your savings account's gonna run out of money, right? And then what happens? Then we don't have enough money to pay our bills every month. So now our checking account starts to go negative, right? Negative, negative $10, negative $20, negative $30. And at, what, at some point, you're gonna get a phone call from your bank and they're gonna say, hey, you gotta either put some more money in your checking account or the whole thing's gonna blow up and we're gonna close your checking account. Now, how does that relate to an IUL? With your IUL, every month when you make your premium payment, a certain amount of that premium is going to the policy, right? It's covering our premiums. And a certain amount of that little extra money is going into that savings, that investment side of the IUL. Here's the problem. When you quote your client the minimum premium on that IUL product, the minimum premium, they are not making enough of a premium payment. There's not enough money in the checking account to pay the bill every month on that insurance policy. And so every month, uh, money is transferred, money has to move from that investment side, from that saving side of the IUL, into that policy side, the checking account side, to offset where we're short. At a certain point, the investment side can't keep up with the rising cost of insurance on an IUL. Because every year that we get older, insurance becomes more expensive. And so every month, right, every year, year after year after year, uh, the cash value is being used to pay those higher premium costs. And so what happens? At a certain point, there's no cash value left. At a certain point, there's nothing left to be able to keep that uh, policy side sustained. And so what happens? The insurance company says, we simply cannot keep this insurance policy, this death benefit, we cannot keep it going um, based on what you're paying every month because you're paying in the deficit. So what ends up happening? They get a letter from the insurance company saying, your premium now has to go from $200 a month to $600 a month, and your client says, keep it. So. The rule of thumb here is as long as your client is always making that target premium, um, the, the target premium in order to keep that policy on course, then they're not in danger. There will always be enough money to offset uh, where the, where the, when the costs of insurance start to go up, there will always be enough money in that savings side of the IUL to fund where we're short. Um, so if you just, Again, when you're sitting across the kitchen table with a client and they want to understand the concept of an IUL um, and they want to understand why the premium is going to be this and why I still have to make that premium payment every single month, even though it might say it's a flexible premium or I don't have to pay that much, why should they always make that target premium? And remember the concept of your checking account and your savings account and what happens when we, when we run short on either side, right? We want to make sure that we keep both sides in balance. Money in the savings account, plenty of money in the checking account to pay our bills. And if you do that, then it truly is a universal life policy that will sustain your client well into their 80s, 90s, and even into 100. I hope this helps. I hope this helps you to have clarity across the kitchen table. And so we'll, we'll keep this series going and we'll do a few more videos on how to have that clarity at the kitchen table. Thanks everyone. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and mash the little bell so that you always get alerts when we put out new videos.